Hi and welcome back to Chuck's Tuesday Tips. It's late in the day Tuesday, so this one's probably going to be up at midnight. Anyway, originally I planned to uh, have a tip about reattaching mannequins uh, when they come cut in two, especially these bigs, these big giant elf ones, how to reattach them. Um, but I had a girl named Liz Spencer emailed me and she uh, asked me if I wouldn't mind answering some questions so I decided to, to change it today and uh, there's pretty good questions there's about 10 of them so I decided that today's tip I'm going to answer her questions anyway her first question is what is the largest taxidermy piece so I'm not sure if she means an animal or an actual piece because I've done large group pieces with multiple animals like a pride of lions say six or eight lions together and um, I've also worked on uh, giraffes rhinoceros large crocs uh, biggest fish I ever worked on was a 17 foot great white and then I've done some elephant work too and then it says her next question is have I ever done uh, an animal with genetic mutations well I, I've never had one come in the shop to start fresh but I've had to repair some for the Ripley's believe it or not and they had a, a calf that had two heads and four front legs and uh, just the two rear legs and they had a two-headed bull I had to work on that so I guess that would be a yes and then it, the other question next one was have I ever done a piece that's a cross between two animals we call those novelties. I don't care to do those now, but when I was in the first shop I worked at, he used to do all kinds of stuff like that. So we'd make a catfish. We'd take the front part of a bobcat and the back part of a fish and put it together. And we made like a chicken duck, things like that. And then she wants to know, and a lot of people want to know, why don't I do pets? Uh, the reason I don't do pets is... Um, um, there's so much emotion involved with a person's pet. They're almost a member of the family. And uh, I've just had a lot of bad experiences where people have come in to pick them up and they started crying. And one lady screamed and ran out because she, and, and just, it just, so much emotion involved with them because while we can bring them and make them look like fluffy, it doesn't feel like fluffy anymore and it doesn't move like fluffy and it's just I just don't care to get involved in that and then sometimes I do break my own rules I'll do like I did a canary for a lady and she never picked it up because a canary a bird I don't really mind doing and then the next question was have I ever taxidermized a non-animal like a reptile well here's another rule I broke I mounted this kid's pet lizard and it's still here so yeah, I've done reptiles, and uh, and then what's the weirdest customer request? Probably the weirdest customer request was a guy wants me to mount his knee bones on something. That's pretty weird to me. And then uh, most of the other requests I get are are, are uh, pretty just I would consider normal. I, I don't get too many goofy, legitimate job requests but uh people oh no the real weirdest one i just remembered this guy wanted me to stuff his fingers that he cut them off with the saw and i wouldn't even go there so and then uh the next question is do i ever pose the animals in a non-natural position i really don't like to do that however sometimes i will do for a good customer i did these little soldiers that are not really natural that is uh, kids shot these little squirrels we made them in the little army guys um, so sometimes I do but on my big pieces I really like to pose them natural then the next question is how would you color a skin well I assume you mean like to change the color it says here like to make a pink bobcat well we would dye it uh, a friend of mine used to work at uh, a huge shop and they did a lot of movie work and we had to make uh, some horses for uh, dances with wolves that 
they had all these bendable legs and they had blood inside them, fake blood, so when they got shot they'd um, gush out and all that stuff, make it look real. And uh, they needed a black horse and we could only get like a white horse, so we had to dye it with all these dye kits from the store, it took like forever. And then, this I love this question, have I ever injured myself on the job? <laughs> Countless times I sawed my finger in half, I've sewed my hand down onto a mannequin, I've shot myself through the hand with a nail gun, I ripped my hand open when a glass paint bottle um, broke on me when I was trying to open it. Oh, one time I got a shark in and I just touched it and it just cut right down to the bone and I just grabbed some crazy glue and glued it shut. I even still have a hole right here from where I missed with the big pin last week and stuck it in there. So I'm always uh, doing stuff like that. And I'm kind of hard on my help too. One time I was tying a knot with a, around a pair of pliers, pulling that string tight and it snapped and it flew back and hit my buddy Evan right between the eyes and put a big old dent in his forehead. We had to go get stitches. So. And then uh, this question I get a lot, what's my favorite uh, animal to make a taxidermy piece? And uh, my favorite animal is Rocky Mountain Bighorn Sheep. I like to do those big sheep life-size. I think they look really majestic and, and represent the outdoors. But I don't have an actual favorite one per se. It depends on the job. I get really excited about certain jobs. One time I did two bears going up after a uh, beehive and made a tree and everything that's pretty cool and uh, and then it says what's my least favorite oh god my least favorite is fish and birds birds because if people were honest they got about a 50 percent chance of not coming out a rough bird just looks rough and fish fish drive me crazy because uh, you can never get the color perfect because it all depends on what the guy has in his head, you know, it'd be like, it was darker green. I'm like, well, what's darker green? Like black? Or no, it was lighter, or this, or that, you know? So, that kind of stuff is, is makes me crazy. And then it says, the last question is, what's the easiest animal to taxidermize and the hardest? And um, I, I would answer that question like this. Each type of animal, each, um, like a boar, or a big elk, or a goose, a duck, quail, whatever it is, they each all have their own um, difficulties. But I would say, if you wanted to say what's like my bread and butter for me, deer, deer go together easy for me. Uh, life-size bears, I, I'm pretty good at life-size, it doesn't frustrate me too much. So. Um, I would have to say, for me, deer is the easiest. But hey, you might talk to another guy who's a bird guy, and he'll tell you birds are easy for him. You know? So, anyhow, um, I really appreciate that Liz asked me those questions, and I would appreciate anyone else with a request to email me with a, if they want to know something or see something. Uh, for the raccoon guy, finally getting my hands on a raccoon skin to mount so we'll do a life-size raccoon I'm gonna be doing a bobcat soon oh and I want to thank the kids from Royal High School for asking me to go out there and speak last week and uh, the last thing I want to say is I guess my first rap song is up on iTunes now so you can go to iTunes and check it out all right well thanks for tuning in to Chuck's Tuesday tips thanks for watching Thanks for the support. I really appreciate it. We'll see you next week.